tired of the everyday grind? Want to get away from it all? Descent into Paradise. everybody from sunny Florida. Here's wishing you the best of everything. And it's my personal belief that the best of everything comes from right down here. Hey everybody, this is Steph from Just Today in Paradise.com and thanks for tuning in to this week's part two episode of Just a Podcast in Paradise. Me and the Dip crew love living in the Sunshine State and it's our goal to help you plan for your very own day in paradise. Follow along as we explore the keys, theme parks, springs, and everything in between. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so we can notify you when our new episodes are live. As you know, last week, we mixed up a zombie for you, so if you're looking for that recipe, head over to Patreon for digital downloads of that and every other night's recipe. We're ready if you are, so kick up your feet, throw on your shades, put an umbrella in that tiki mug, and let's take a trip to paradise. Welcome back to part two. Part two. Part two. two parts of the episode two. Ever. In the it's parts. tiki tiki times two. Tiki tiki we Tuesday, are, but it's on a Friday. We've been recording, and we're broadcasting Monday for twenty four hours. So it's tiki, confusing. Tiki two. It's tiki. pretty much all weeky tiki. Taka tiki. <laughs> tiki taka taka. So two can tiki. last tiki. week uh, we talked about what Garrett. Oh, part two. Oh, part two. Yeah, this we is talked part about two. Part, what are we talking about? Part one. I'm like, I wasn't on last time. Those zombies Gilligan's hit Island hard. Bar. Gilligan's right. Island Bar. We right. talked about yeah, the top with five Mike. tiki bars. We did. Gilligan's Island was on there. Mm-hmm. Yep. We can. I couldn't possibly put them in order. No. Why are you looking at me like I that? I don't think we ever mentioned numbers four and five. Well, number four was okay. Um, we talked about Trader Sam's. In yes. Orlando, we talked about Tiki House. Yes. We talked about the Mai Kai. We yes. talked about Gilligan's Island Bar, and we talked about the Venue Bay Check. Oh, top Did five. Top Gil- Gilligan's Island Bar. I don't remember. That's we who Mike I know, was. but I don't remember talking about it before he got on. Oh, well, that I was like we'll it. Okay. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. We'll okay. I didn't know if we were going to talk about it ahead of time. Like more thoroughly? No, we're good. I thought we were going to introduce it as number four. If we didn't. Do no. you need another zombie? It's that 151 yes. floater. It yes. gets you like, whoa. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, would lo- I would love another floater. Who's Mike? My headphones fell off. All right, listen. Listen to me. Who's Mike? Hey. Uh, Who's Mike? Mike. So, we, as you can see, we love Tiki. Yes. We love the Leaky Tiki. Yes. Right? Which well, is yeah. not so much a Tiki it's bar. It's absolutely not a Tiki <laughs> bar. It's not at all. But they painted it blue, so. And they put, like, fronds. <laughs> right? <laughs> the, yeah. It's, but yeah. We, we wanted to make sure, because I, if you're at home and you're like, I go to Florida, you guys didn't say, my favorite Tiki bar, this list is crap. We wanted to do some honorable mentions. Right. Okay. So, Aku Aku in Orlando, in downtown Orlando. Have you heard of it? No, yeah. it sounds cool. Aku Aku is an intimate lounge. Slash tiki bar. So it's a little bit more refined. Mm. Where like the craft cocktail scene goes pretty hard in downtown Orlando. Aku Aku answers that with some tiki drinks. Uh, They have some upgraded versions of exactly what you would expect. Like classic Mai Tais and Singapore Singapore slings. But they also have volcano bowls. Uh, They have a drink that's called something like Fuck Your Tiger. Or something? Yeah, it gets real wild there. So yeah. if you're in Orlando and you're like, Trader Sam's can't seat me, go to Aqua. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Because it probably is going to happen. Just right. Like, you know, now <laughs> you're, you're probably not going to get likelihood. In. And it's far, so plan for that. Uh, there's a place called the Square Grouper hmm. in Jupiter. Uh, one of the most popular watering halls. Watering holes? Watering oh, holes, holes. In Florida. Uh, the Square Grouper Tiki Bar in Jupiter Inlet is home... Is you'll like this, Megan? Is the home of Alan Jackson's "It's Five O'clock Somewhere" video with Jimmy Buffett? Wow! Oh, yeah. yep. Love him. Love him. He has written. If you think of a song that you like, Jimmy Buffett has written it. Uh, they also have the Jupiter Billfish tournaments uh, that you can play around and drink out there. Uh, they have live music stage seven days a week. It's right on the water. Chef's kiss. Do you know what Square Grouper is? Square Grouper? Yeah. What is Square Grouper? Because there's a lot of places called the Square Grouper. There's a couple in key um, in the Keys called I, Square I Grouper. I remember seeing them in the Keys. Mm-hmm. It's um, a grouper 
that ate something square and is now square shaped. That is a great thought, <laughs> but it's not it. <laughs> Darn. It's a grouper mm-hmm. who is like kind of a nerd. Like he's a square. Nope. Like he's a the thing about square. square grouper is it's not square grouper at all. It's it circular. To be well, it's not grouper at all. Is it? Um, uh, it is flounder? a square. Trout. It's not a fish. It's not even alive. Um, it broccoli. will liven you up. It's a drink. It's marijuana. Oh, right. Wow. So I've not heard that name. What no. ha- happened was people be smuggling drugs. People be doing into that. Florida ports. And, you know, one thing leads to another. The drogas wind up in the water in the square, like vacuum sealed packages. And they either wash they up on shore. Or people find them. They're square, square grouper. Group. <laughs> you get it? Uh-huh. Actually, my, I have a friend, like an old family friend. He's a. That sells square grouper. No, and now it all makes sense. No, but he, he was a, he's a mate uh, in Key West. And he, oh. uh, and they were uh, deep sea fishing with like a bunch of people. And they found square grouper. Like, yes, it's. It was massive. Yeah. The amount that Goliath he found. square grouper, if you will. Uh, <laughs> so there you go. You learned something. Never say we didn't teach you anything yeah. here at Just a Podcast. Even if it's Paris. illegal. Uh, there's the... I'm so sorry. Megan. <laughs> there's the Island Fish Company in Marathon serving up an array of flavor-fueled oceanic feasts. Uh, the Island Fish Company in Marathon is the longest tiki bar in the Florida Keys. Cool. How long is it? It is so long, you wouldn't believe it. Why don't you tell me how long it is? Garrett, it's lo- it's the longest one. <laughs> you know what the so second long. longest one is? It's longer than that. Uh, it's got seafood, picturesque sunsets, cold drinks. It's a local favorite. It's at mile marker 54, if you're on your way to mile marker one. Uh, they're also famous for their fish dip, Yum. which is something that I don't like. I like fish dip. Smoked. Oh my God. It must be yeah, smoked. Yeah, it is smoked. Yeah. I just feel like that's all you're getting. It's just like mushy wood chips, it tastes like to me. I kind what? of get it, but it's like they're like like You're brined crazy. wood chip. And I like that about it. <laughs> brined wood chip. Get your brined wood chips at mile marker 54 in the Keys. Uh, another honorable mention, which you just went. Uh, I, I mean, I have a couple. Okay, wait. You can go. You guys can close this out. All right. Or you want right. to alternate? No, okay, I, you go. We could alternate. You're right. You go. So this is a new one. Uh-huh. It's a new one, one that I haven't been to. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't been to St. Pete lately, St. Petersburg mm-hmm. in Florida. Florida. They built a pier. It's a very lovely pier. Mm-hmm. Rebuilt a it's pier. A, it's, it's, it's happening. Okay. Um, at the very end of the pier, they have like a five story probably. Yeah, five, like that. Three story. Uh, no. It's like four or five story. Okay, don't ask Restaurant. Me that. Like, there's a like two five restaurants story in there, restaurant? I think. There's like two restaurants in there. Yeah. And at the top... You're, you're shaking your head. It might it's not be. five it's, okay, stories. Maybe four stories. Maybe four How many stories. rows of windows do you say? I, it's I like kind of like it, so you can't two really, stories. You can't I tried really... to find the answer and I couldn't. Anyway, it's, a, it's several stories. Five stories is like a skyscraper. Thank you. <laughs> it's probably three or four. <laughs> three stories. It's probably okay. four. Um, and at the very the it's rooftop, which is like it's it's called rooftop, but it's covered, which is kind of nice. But it technically is the roof, if that makes sense. So you're on the roof, but it's covered. And they have a tiki bar at the top of the roof. It's called Pier Tiki, but Tiki is spelled like T E A, like T. Oh, like teak, like, like the yeah. furniture. Oh, teak, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or tiki. the wood. Anyway, Pier Tiki. Um, and it's, you're on the edge of a pier, so you're literally surrounded by water. Five stories up. And you're on a roof, <laughs> um, a few, an, an undetermined amount of stories up. <laughs> and it's very beautiful. Like, I was beautiful. On, on the ground floor, and it was beautiful. So imagine being at the top floor. Why didn't you go to the top the floor? the cheeky vibes. I wasn't ready to start drinking yet. I can't day uh, drink and night drink. You I couldn't go out upstairs that night, without- So it was a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> Well, hard. So that would have set you right over the edge. Yeah, exactly. Nice. But it looks lovely. Mm hmm. And I highly recommend it if you're in the same area. We'll have to go back. Sounds like we need to yeah, be going back head up to the Sarasota area pretty soon. It's easy enough to get there. Straight shot for Straight us. Straight shot. Yep. Okay. I, will, I, I stand by. Well, you know, you guys keep going. Okay. Did you have one that you wanted to share? It is. Well, Bear? I mean, I guess. I mean, there's one, I mean, there's one in Fort Myers that okay. that's near and dear. It's called. Tiki bar. <laughs> it's connected what, to a, it's connected to a Days Inn. Okay. It's behind a Days Inn. And it's a place where you find locals. A lot yeah, of locals. A big local spot. But it's also it's not only a local They're like gigantic spot. locals. It's not only a local spot. Uh-huh. It's also like a 
college hangout too. Okay. So like it's it's a real like just plethora of different types of people. Mm. Uh you know, you see bikers that are there, you see frat guys that are there. Probably people vacationing at the Va- days in. People vacationing at the days in. Oof. Uh <laughs> It's three stories. It's three stories. The days in. What I, what I said. No, the, <laughs> the freaking PRT. Uh, it the looks so large, but it's just three stories. It, they're what three large stories. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that is. Uh, Sorry. Five story. A five story restaurant. It was huge. I mean, look at this picture. A it looks so high story up. five story restaurant. Let me see. Anyway, again. it's good, good for photo ops. Pure Tiki, great for photo ops. It literally looks like you're on top of the Empire State Building. Yeah. <laughs> it's five stories up. Yeah. Is the Empire State Building five stories? Yeah, it's just, it's definitely a great place to people watch. You've got pool tiki there. Bar. Sorry, you, I interrupted. Yeah, tiki bar. You got pool. You got cornhole. You have the. Little... You can go in the pool. No, uh, well, I mean, but you can I mean, see the pool. I mean, like it's over a small fence. You could jump in the pool. <laughs> Not that we're encouraging that. Not that, but it would be possible. But physically. they have, like the little ring game, like the, <gasps> the tiki yeah. ring toss. And I freaking cornhole. love that. I've already said it. Oh, and, and they have pool. Yeah, yeah. and pool. And oh, is that what you meant by pool? Yeah. I see. And they well, have... They, well, Days Inn has a pool that you can walk to. <laughs> you might want to break into the Days Inn pool. Right. I'm sorry. Everything that you just said, <laughs> we already just said. already oh, said. Oh, well, you have so to understand sorry. that Megan was trying to prove that the it's tiki five bar was it's five right. stories. Wait, so we've talked about the longest the tiki bar that's the tallest tiki bar. Did you mention the restaurant that you can... Like, no, I haven't even finished talking because you've been around for twice. <laughs> can I just... Can I just finish? Yes. They also... Have a, a smaller little tiki uh, little area right next to the tiki bar where you can play all night beer pong. All night beer pong? Yep. Wow. That's fun. I mean, that is fun. Not all night. They do close. I mean, but meaning like it's always going on and you just it's grab and somebody's pong. like, oh, I'm as up next. As far as beer or, yeah. pong goes, it's a lot. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That sounds fun. I would go. I'm done. Well, <laughs> you forgot to mention that oh, there's, there's a, a restaurant. restaurant that you can like it's not even like a walk. It's like literally you just, it's like you look to your You're right. You're already in it. there, basically, okay. yes. Yeah. Uh, and they've Is got, the you know, good? all different kinds of food. It's decent. And if it's you're pretty dr- dr- drunk. If you've been playing beer pong all night. And you need a bite to eat, it's right there. You just turn yeah. your mouth and take a bite. It's fine. There's literally someone with their arm stretched <laughs> out. It's like if you're running a marathon. Yeah. Except they have yeah. like onion rings. Exactly. Yeah, and you just put your mouth on them. Okay. That sounds nice. Thanks, Kara. You're welcome. <laughs> Meg, did you have another one? You I don't. That was you my don't? other one. Okay. I'm so she, sorry. she explained. No, she explained mine <laughs> that's as well. I had to put in because I, I really, I really mm-hmm. actually really like that bar. It is cool because it's kind of almost like divish. I, yeah, but it's dip dives with Megan and, and Garrett. Said that. Mm-hmm. I said it was uh, okay. Well, I didn't listen. Maybe I'll just the, dub the, you guys over each other yeah. and Pure post, tiki and we'll three see. Stories. Yeah, <laughs> three stories. Three stories. And how many stories is the tiki bar? One. It's just, just it's the one. It's, it's on. It's in, it. on the ground. It's, there's not even like floor. It's you're, it's, you're essentially in the ground. Yeah, literally, oh literally. Okay. It's literally. T- it's yeah. There's no floor. Yeah, you no, fall right it's through ground. it. It's the ground. It's yeah. the ground. You fall right. You fall it's right through it. It's just a bottomless pit. Uh, last up on the list of honorable mentions, I don't think any of us have been there. It's called Jungle Bird Tiki. Oh, uh, I want to go so bad. <laughs> Sorry. Where? Uh, uh, <laughs> it just officially permanently opened in Cape Coral. They were like a pop-up oh, yeah. for a while. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. Uh, and they announced that they're officially open. They have uh, what looks like some amazing cocktails and like upscale tiki style food. So like the stuff that we talked about where you think of... Tiki food is being sort of Asian inspired. Yes. Uh, right. So they have a lot of, Ramen. of that. Yeah. They have octopus. Uh, they have skewers, buns, all that good buns. stuff. All yeah. I'm saying, My Cape Coral is Cape 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 popping. happening. Yeah. No. Uh, there's good food it's in sick. Cape Coral. Here's the thing, though. Cape Coral, for me, because you got to remember, we're out of Naples. So yeah. Cape Coral is... Like an hour drive from my house. Mm, a little more probably. So at that point, yeah, it depends on traffic, I yeah. guess. So at that point, it's like, do I want to stop at Cape Coral? Or yeah. Just, you know, it's go, like, do you want to yeah. go all the way to Cape Coral or do you want to keep going? So it's like, if you're going to drive an hour, you want to maybe go somewhere more better, like Siesta Key. Uh, okay, so now that we've spent all this time over the last two episodes enticing you with all the Polynesian goodness that Florida has to offer, maybe you're saying to yourself, hey, Self, I don't have a tri- trip planned for a while. Or maybe you're not planning to leave your house until you've had at least 18 doses of the vaccine. <laughs> so we've got your back here at the Dip Crew. We're going to be telling you how to bring Tiki home. So stay tuned after the break. And we've got a special guest for you. Uh, 
Okay, Garrett, it's time for bed. No, 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 no. Wait, wait. Can you, can, you, can you tell me a story first? All right, one story, and then it's nighty night for you. Do you remember the one about Meggie Locks and the three cocktails? <gasps> oh my gosh, I love this one. Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Meggie Locks. She went for a walk on the beach. Pretty soon, she came upon a tiki bar. She sat down on the bar, and immediately she was served three beautiful cocktails. Meggie Locks can never resist a free drink. She tasted the first one and realized the straw was plastic. No, plastic is terrible for the environment. I can't drink this. So, she tasted the second drink. Gross. The straw is all soggy and all I taste is paper. So, she tasted the last cocktail. Mmm, this hay straw is perfect. She said happily and enjoyed the rest of her delicious margarita. Well, Garrett, what's the moral of the story? <sighs> that when you use hay straws, all natural, 100%, biodegradable, gluten-free, and never soggy straws, you're actually doing your part to help take care of our planet. They can be tossed right in the compost bin after and will break down naturally and return to the circle of life. That's right, big guy. Good night, Steph. Good night, Garrett. We can all sleep a little easier thanks to hay straws. <sighs> Visit haystraws.com to find out more. So if you're looking to take some Tiki Life home with you and try your hand at a few South Pacific mixers, you can't just throw them in your old coffee cup. You need to put them in a vessel fit for a Tiki God. So we've invited on our friend Josh from Lost Temple Traders to educate us on what goes on into designing some of your favorite Tiki mugs. Hi, Josh. Welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Of I'm course. to be on. Yeah, we're really excited to have you. Uh, you know, we've been talking a lot about making tiki cocktails. We actually made a zombie for tonight's episode. Uh, so we got to talk about all the things that we can put some of these drinks in. Um, yes, there is a plethora. And right now is probably the best time in history beyond kind of like the 60s when the tiki movement really was going strong to... Uh, be looking for tiki mugs and different vessels to put your tiki cocktails in. It's really seen a, a, a comeback in the last probably 10 years, but really in the last three to five years. Um, so there are a lot of options from low to mid to high to, um, to increase your collection and make your drinking experience fun. Yeah, and especially, all, you know, in conjunction with that, no better time to be trying your hand at making up some drinks yourself at home as, you know, depending on where you live, certain places you can't even go out to a tiki bar. Uh, so we can get, definitely talk about experimenting. Yeah, there's a lot of, um, I, I mean, there's a lot of home drinking going on these days uh, with COVID the way that it is. Uh, I think a lot of people are more interested than ever in trying to make a good drink at home as opposed to, um, you know, just polishing off what they have left sitting on top of the refrigerator <laughs> right exactly uh i know that we have definitely expanded our liquor cabinet collection this last year uh so so let's talk about a little bit more about you for those that don't know uh we've been following you at lost Ta temple traders on instagram forever but for those of you that aren't familiar with what you do tell us how you got into the art of designing tiki mugs well, for us, it was, um, we were fans before anything my partner Dave and I um, started doing this together. We started as an Instagram. We used to go to all these tiki bars, Trader Sam's, and Tiki Tea, and Tonga Hut. Um, being in Southern California, there are a lot of great options. And at one point a couple of years ago, um, I, I looked at him and said, we should do a, a tiki Instagram. And he's like, nobody's going to want to follow that. <laughs> so I did it for like a month. Um, we run a handle called in, at Enchanted Tiki Bar as well. And uh, he's like, okay, I'll do it with you. And and it grew, and, and we found a following, and now we're at about 25,000 people following that handle. And through it, we really just found this wonderful community of, of artists and makers and um, people that really like cocktails and tropical escapism. And, uh, and so we really um, started as collectors. We have, both have pretty formidable tiki mug collections, and most of it is just that we really enjoy the art. Um, there are guys like Tiki Diablo and 
uh, Crazy Owl and uh, John Mulder of Ecom Bookum Shag that just do amazing, amazing art, and you happen to also be able to drink from it. So for me, it was this um, combination of of the culinary, where food meets art meets escapism, really was this wonderful combination of things that I loved. And so um, we started, our first mug was really a couple of years ago. Uh, we had an idea for a mug, and so we went to Tiki Diablo, uh, Daniel Gallardo, um, to make our first mug. And really for us, it became about doing collaborations with people we really loved and respected. And over the last year, we've had the ability to help artists um, while the pandemic was going and, and things were tight and bars were shut down. Um, we really wanted to just help artists continue to make art and do things that we really enjoyed. So um, all of our mugs are collaborations. We do a lot of the yeah. design, but then we pick the sculptor and the... Um, maker based on the project and who we think would be best for it. So um, it, it's cool. It's the thing that we really enjoy as fans. We came into it from a fan centric perspective, which was what do we want to make and who do we want to make it? And um, we've had the ability to really um, help some artists get started and, and work with people we think are awesome. And, and that's where we came from. So we've been doing it about three years now and uh, got a lot of good things coming this year. So it's, it's been really fun. Yeah, and, and I know we're going to touch on some of what you've got coming this year in just a little bit. But before we go forward, I want to go back. And you touched on a few things, especially sort of like the serendipity uh, of this moment as you work with different artists and help bring tiki culture to you know people across the country and I would imagine the world. And up until this point, we've been talking about the history of tiki and how it was created in California in the 30s, moved to Florida in the 50s. And during both time periods, as well as now, I think people were longing for, like you said, sense of fun uh and the sense of escapism so this lifestyle is alive and well and probably bigger than ever so what exactly does tiki culture mean to you you know i it, it's a very interesting thing because there's a lot of questions now about like you know tiki culture where is it it's a lot of borrowing from other cultures um i think to me one of the things that really drew me to tiki culture in the first place was a uh, passion and a love of mythology and if you really like you go back to tiki being the Maori word for man. Um, I hope that people really start to explore in depth the cultures that, that inspired this. And, and it is more than just like um, Polynesian and Oceanic cultures that are make up tiki. Now you get a lot of the post-war nautical influence. Mm -hmm. um, when a lot of the soldiers came back from war, they really were missing that, those tropical vibes of places that they had visited. And so you see a lot of nautical influence. Um, if you look at, places like Palm Springs, um, kind of Frank Lloyd Wright, mid-century modern um, kind of vibe permeates parts of tiki culture. And, and artists like Shag are really um, uh, exemplary of that kind of style being brought into tiki. Uh, you see a lot of pinup and, and hot rod culture. Um, yeah. You see some monster culture, like old 30s monster movies, Creature from the Black Lagoon. Um and, and some horror influences because I think of the, the, the age of exploration and, and the fear and um, that people kind of associate with like going into the jungle on an exploration. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a really interesting mishmash of culture. Um, I think my favorite part is like, I really appreciate the art of places like Papua New Guinea and uh, Hawaii and, and the traditional carvers that did such awesome things. Um, so I love that, but I also love the, the culinary uh, experimentation and exploration. Craft cocktails are, are having a moment for the last 20 years, um, but they really started with Don the Beachcomber. He was one right. of the first to add those kind of ingredients to his drinks. And so um, it really is cool to see rum starting to slowly creep back. If you go to most grocery stores, you'll see like Sailor Jerry and Bacardi. Yep. Um, even if you go to Whole Foods, you might get one or two that are a plantation or something else but you'll have like shelves and shelves of whiskey so it's nice to see that the the og craft cocktails are really starting to have a moment again mm -hmm. and bring those spices and flavors and and um, creativity to the forefront there are people that are just doing amazing things uh with cocktails um here in california if you go to um strong water rob and those guys their cocktails are crazy um 
down in New Orleans on the East Coast, Beach Bum Berry was really the forefather of bringing back these tiki drinks. Um, so Latitude is amazing, and the drinks that he makes are just unlike anything I've ever had in the world. So um, it is that combination of like the the culinary aspects and the culture that make it really, really awesome. And I would hope that as people start to explore tiki, they really start to explore um, the cultures that inspired it because there's some really beautiful people who have this amazing art. And um, there's a reason that most people would like to be on a beach somewhere with a drink in their hand because um, it just is that, that escapist vacation vibe that makes you feel good. And I'm very much an advocate for people having a better drink in their hand than Amen. whatever most hotels serve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I love how, you know, through some of this research that we've done, uh, especially for today's show, you know, you realize how much historically has been brought up and sort of permeated our entire society from tiki culture. Like there really weren't craft cocktails before there were tiki cocktails. And I think some people think that maybe tiki can be kitschy or corny, but there's really a lot of robust history uh, that goes along with it. Yeah. And it, and it can be because a lot of uh, places, touristy shops when you're in those places have what um, collectors like to call clown tiki. So the brightly painted tiki's that you might find on like a Wayfair or Mm -hmm. something like that. But honestly, there's just a depth of history to the art. That's amazing from just the the artistry of of the islands that they came from to people like Barney West and Milan Guanco who carved in the the mid fifties and sixties. Their stuff is, is beautiful and iconic and, and, um, I would hope that as people start to explore tiki, they realize, and not just tiki in general, but tropical escapism, Mm -hmm. nautical bars, the whole thing, that there's an art form that is really thriving in that world right now. And I've met so many talented people that have um, contributed to um, the story of what it is now, what it could possibly be as it it expands. And um, the art is is gorgeous. There are guys like Montiki in Astoria that are doing... Um, a lot of mugs that are inspired by like Japanese vinyl and, and that side of things. And there are people who are doing more of the horror guy named more monsters. And then he is, mm. is, is doing these horror themed mugs that are amazing, but it, it really is about the, the artistry of the drink and the artistry of the vessel kind of coming together in an environment that is fun. And I also think that the Instagram culture has really helped um, revitalize this art form because people want to take pictures of a drink that's on fire. Yes, that's true. I know I do. <laughs> I, I mean, pretty much how I got started. So <laughs> yeah, definitely. You see something on fire and and you want to order that immediately. So I think you you know moving into the artistry. From what I can tell, there's a little mystery behind when the first tiki mug hit the scene. Uh, I know you know you talked a little bit about Don the Beachcomber, and you know back at the inception of that bar, there wouldn't have really been tiki mugs. But what can you give us any insight it, on that? I don't think the mugs actually hit until my best. I can tell the late fifties, early sixties, you got things like the original Tiki Bob, um, Sperlin did a lot of mugs back then. And then you see the rise of like the OMC, Odagiri, Japanese made, um, Tiki mugs that ended up in a lot of bars in that area. But, uh, but prior to that, um, the Dawn lipstick mug, which is the, they call it the lipstick mug cause it's a bamboo that had a red top and it was designed with the red top, um, because, of the uh, the fashion trend at the time was to have the bright red lipstick. Right, and so right. there was the red top on the bamboo mug so that it didn't leave a uh, noticeable lipstick imprint. So I, I think, you know, since then, there's, there's no doubt that vacationers have always loved to bring things home with them. I think that the tiki mug is like that obvious drink or that obvious trinket rather, you know, whether you're bringing it home from a trip you went on or you find one on Instagram and you're like, oh my gosh, that reminds me of my trip, you know, wherever. Uh, so tell me a little bit about how you think people can start their collecting. I think the, the best way for most people to start a collection is with the, the mug at the local bar. Um, I think that that's pretty much how we started, um, Trader Sam's for us and Tonga Hut. Um, you know, you see it and you're like, this is cool. It's a cool way to drink out of something. I'm going to take this one home with me. And then from there, it really, for us was an exploration of like, um, 
local uh, tiki marketplaces, which is kind of was the next step for us. Um, Don the Beachcomber uh, in Huntington Beach used to have a once a month tiki marketplace where all these artists would come and it would be carvings and glass floats and tiki mugs. Oh, that's so cool. All of that type of thing. And, And so that's really where we got to know a lot of the people that we admire today. Um, and, uh, Tiki Diablo does one usually in Marina del Rey out here called, um, Shipwreck. There are a couple in Florida, I think, that a lot of these haven't happened in a while because of the, uh, pandemic, clearly. Mm-hmm. But that's really where we started to get, meet some of these artists. There are big events like Tiki Oasis and, uh, Tiki Caliente and the Hooky Loud down in Florida that was at the Maikai, which mm-hmm. is currently, um, in flux as a bar because their ceiling recently collapsed and they're working with the city to try to um, fix that place, which is a a legendary venue. So um, the Mike High often had events like that. So I think that was fun. Um, Follow big Tiki mug makers like Tiki Diablo and Ika Bookham. And um, there's a website that a friend of ours runs called the search for Tiki, which is a catalog of Tiki mugs. So um, when we first got in, there was a site called Uga Muga that no longer exist but i would just spend hours browsing um different mugs and one mug would lead me to another mug would lead me to another mug and discovering different artists and what i liked and and what i liked about the the genre and um there are a bunch of amazing people you can follow van tiki is another one he's an artist uh out of oregon who does this thing called tiki technical tuesday every tuesday which is a video series that really explains the technicalities of tiki mug making mm. from um making the from sculpting it to doing the mold to doing the um the firing and the the glazing he's just a technical es- expert so i would look up van tiki and uh his tiki technical tuesday if you're really interested in the art of how these things get made from a technical perspective oh that's awesome yeah we're gonna have to check that out does he do the series on uh, the a website or is it on youtube it's on YouTube. Awesome. Um, I would his Instagram always links to it, so I don't know what his, his YouTube channel is. Um, but he's at Van Tiki V A N T I K I on YouTube or on, on Instagram. Instagram. Perfect. Yeah, we'll yep. have to check him out. We'll put a link in the show notes. So let's get back to you, Josh. Uh, like I said, we've been following you for a while, and we we love all the unique designs that you come up with. Uh, arguably, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it seems like some of them might be. Um, Trader Sam's inspired, but I wanted to know, do you have a, a favorite design and where do you get some of that inspiration? Yeah. I, I, a lot of our mugs are take inspiration from multiple places. Um, some of it is definitely Disney and Adventureland because we grew up big Disney fans, mm-hmm. but we always like to do, there's a lot of people doing Disney mugs right now. We always like to do things that are a little bit traditional with a little bit of Disney inspiration and a little bit of inspiration pulled from other places. So for example, we just did um, a zombie severed skipper and, and Mm -hmm. this mug I love because the inspiration came from so many different um, places, both Uh, clearly when you say skipper, you think about a jungle cruise skipper, of course, Um, Trader Sam's bartenders call themselves skippers, um, that type of notion. But the zombie, which you said you had at the, at the beginning of the show um, is a very traditional Don the beachcomber drink. And our mug has a head that will separate from the body and flip over to make two mugs. So you can actually drink from the body and from the head of this mug, um, which is a an homage to Ren Clark, who ran these big tiki palaces in the 60s. Um, his first, one of his more famous mugs is called the Severed Head that sits upside down and you drink from the neck. And so um, the face itself is um, the shape of Bill Hinsman, who was the first zombie in Night of the Living Dead. Oh, cool. George Romero. So when you put it all together, um, it's not just one thing that inspires us. It's traditional tiki. It's, um, in this case, if you're going to make a zombie mug, um, you want to, I took inspiration from Bill because he was just such an iconic zombie. So the face shape is, um, Bill Hinsman, the body and, and outfit is a little jungle cruise. The zombie comes from clearly the zombie drink and the, uh, Severed head of it all is a nod to Ren Clark. And so uh, that one in particular is just a good example of taking inspiration from a lot of different places. Um, we look a lot at traditional tiki. So we wanted to do um, 
for example, a jungle bird. And a lot of people do birds and versions of jungle birds mm-hmm. and toucans and all of that. And um, so for us, when we were thinking about it, we were thinking about um, really the Enchanted Tiki Room and the sing- singing parrots, but we didn't want to do Enchanted Tiki Room. Um, but in my thought, in this world that exists, um, if there were talking and singing birds, there might be um, a tribe that celebrated them and adorned themselves with their feathers and, and mm-hmm. that. And so we did, um, which if you look at uh, Papua New Guinea culture there or other different um, tiki cultures, there are um, statues that really celebrate different birds. And so we, we took that um, and made kind of our own version that, that kind of is a traditional tiki that pulls a lot of features from a, a parrot. Um, so the mask itself has kind of more of a curved um, bill on it and the eyes are bigger and rounder and the body has feathers on it and stuff. So, um, so in that case, it was, it, it pulls inspiration from actual culture, um, from, uh, a part of adventure land that we loved and from that traditional tiki figure that you're, you're used to seeing. And so, um, and from the jungle bird cocktail itself. Mm-hmm. So a lot of what we do, um, you know, some of it is the inspiration's a little bit easier to see some of it's a mix of different things some of it's just you know an idea we had that we just did a swirly bob which is um like soft serve with the traditional tiki bob face Mm -hmm. um and uh really when you you looked at it you were like oh that's that's obvious (laughs) it's like a dole whip everyone put a yeah everyone put a uh we don't call it that because because we clearly don't have the rights to anything. <laughs> the mug would be a lot more expensive that. in that case. Be a lot more expensive, but right. it's, it's swirly. It's right. soft swirl, so you know. Um, but uh, yeah, so it really is just us being collectors and and knowing the history of tiki, and and we both have pretty extensive collections. And looking at things that we liked or we think that would fit on mm-hmm. the shelf, um, and things that really complement the different artists that we've worked with. We work with people like. Tiki Diablo, who's amazing. Um, we've got a mug coming from a guy named Trevor Foster, who does these amazing skulls. He's actually an American who moved to Thailand, works with this gas kiln. He's technically one of the most amazing mug makers I've ever seen. Wow. Um, but to the point where he sent us a skull as a sample and it got sent back because it was too real looking and oh custom thought it was too real looking. <laughs> That's crazy. So, so um, yeah, we've got kind of a version of a skull mug coming from him that's really cool um it's really about for us uh finding people that inspire us and projects with um people we think are way more talented than us right well i i love that there's so many layers and really each mug tells a story you know i love that you threw in uh, a little history into each one uh i love i didn't realize that you partnered and collaborated with all these different artists so it's really like so many hands go into the ultimate finished product so I, I think that's really awesome and you know you've teased a lot of what's coming in 2021 on your page uh, I definitely have my eye on that mug that looks like there's going to be a squid integrated in it so can you tell us about maybe some upcoming projects that we'd be able to have access to soon yeah so the um the it's called the repellent charge it's a squid attacking a submarine um and that one was really I, I would say it's almost a year in the making, but there's a, a famous Tiki sculptor named Squid. And um, we've, we, he just uh, sculpted a mug for us called the Head Salesman that was designed by Paul Briggs, who is also Tiki Tum, um, who some of you, if you're Disney fans following, there's a movie call, coming out called Raya and the Last Dragon. Yes. Um, he's a co-director on that film. So, Paul, we met at one of our releases a couple of years ago and uh, we love him and his art style. And so eventually we're like, well, let's make a mug together. So yeah. um, we met him at the release of our first head salesman, which was done by Tiki Diablo, which is our first mug. And that has now become an artist series for us. So we have different artists um, giving us their take on that particular uh, design so that eventually we'll have a little bit of a time capsule of people working right now. And they're different styles, but with the same design, which we think is really fun. Um, squid had come off of that project with us, and we asked him, well, have you ever made a squid mug? Because there are several. And right. he said no. And so we had this idea for a squid attacking a submarine, which 
it's really funny um, how people sometimes have the same kind of thoughts because I think there have been two of them that have come out since we got the sculpted and started production on it. Uh huh. Um, very different takes on it, but um, yeah, it's that squid. collective consciousness. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, so Squid sculpted this mug for us. Uh, Tiki Bauer, who are production partners of ours, are uh, in the middle of production with it right now. I actually just saw a glaze test for colors last night, so we're pretty close to locking that mug. Um, and it should be available, I'd say, within a month, a month and a half. Oh, um, perfect. We talked about the skull mug that Trevor Foster is working on for us, which is really nice. Um, a lot of people have known us for our collaborations with Tiki Diablo. We have another headhunter with him coming out later in the year that's different than the one we did with him previously. Um, we have, I'm trying to think, there's a bunch of stuff on the project. We have a project with a guy named Rainforest Tiki, who I think is, really talented and creative um, that should be coming very soon. He's, I think, at Rainforest Tiki on Instagram if anybody want to look, wants to look at his stuff. Um, just a lot of fun things. And it is really collaborative art. I think a lot of times um, people don't realize how many steps there are, but we usually have conceptors or artists who draw it. So that's most of the time us, but we also work with different artists. Um, we'll have a sculptor which we work with fantastic sculptors like Squid. Um, there's a guy I found named Dale Silva out of, uh, he's in New England, but I literally went to a Sculpting with Clay Facebook page and was like, I wonder if there's anybody here that like is a really good sculptor. Uh -huh. And this guy's expertise is in things like horror. And he did the Kunga Kong mug for us last year and has a couple for us this year, but his stuff is just crazy like the detail he puts into things is amazing so mm -hmm. um and then you have the people who are actually producing it um we work with tiki bauer a lot we work with monkey imports a lot tiki diablo shrunken monkey um so yeah i i think everybody's got a different approach there are artists who are solo artists but for us the fun of it is the collaboration with people who are just really talented and love the same thing and so we we facilitate bringing brilliant artists together to do really cool mugs and um we do it because we love it so mm -hmm. i love fun. that yeah and you you've put a smile on my face this whole time i think that there is like we talked about in the beginning just something so exciting about you know putting yourself out on the beach or you know under a tiki hut with a cold drink in your hand and you know any opportunity uh that we can help people bring that home we want to do that so i think the obvious next question is tell us where our followers can find you on social media uh, you can follow us at, at Enchanted Tiki Bar, which is kind of our a bigger Instagram handle that we use for um, tiki news, mostly. So uh, mug releases and bars and all of that stuff. So if you just want to um, follow tiki news, a lot of there's a lot of Disney and Adventureland um, Trader Sam in that particular handle. Or you can follow us at, at Lost Temple Traders, which is our mug making arm. Um, which you'll get to see the stuff that we're doing and maybe get pointed at a few artists that we're working with that you might want to follow. Um, yeah, so those are the best places. Um, we also run a Trader Sam's mug trading group on Facebook, which has a lot of really helpful people. So um, you can look us up there as well. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Josh, for coming on. Uh, I'm sure we will stay in touch and we'll invite you back on the show again. Uh, have a great rest of your day and may the tiki goddess uh Oa smile upon you. Thank you. We really appreciate being on. Oh my gosh, how cool is Josh? Nice guy. So cool. Right? I'm really impressed. I know. I So... Like I said, I've been following him on Instagram forever, so I'm glad we got a chance to pick his brain. But how cool does that flipping mug look that the he's designing one? right now? The squid. Yeah, sick. I, yeah. I want it. I know. I want it too. I'm. They're very impressive. Maybe you, that'll you be the next to in my out collection. Check Instagram because he has. Yeah, we're not out. kidding. So many. Check it out. What's his Instagram? It Steph? is Lost Temple Traders or at Lost Temple Traders. Yeah, I'm at Lost Temple Traders. I guess that's what the kids say. Uh, so. We've done a lot of work, you guys, putting together this two-part episode. This is our first two-part episode. It is. It is. Uh, so I thought I could uh, reward you guys. With what? With Wait. a little game time. Nice. We haven't had one. I didn't know this was going to happen. Game time. 
Real quick. Yeah. Is that you saying game time? Yeah. Okay. I, I like more sure. game Like I did the tune thing. Nice. And, okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure it was you. Of course. Yeah. This, we, this is all produced by the Dip Crew. Except except everything the, we do. Except is, for the theme song. Well, I, mi- I mixed it. I remastered it. it. Oh, oh, I was just meaning yeah. the theme song you had to buy. Well, I do have the license to it. True. In case you're listening, YouTube. Okay. Get off my back. Every time I post it, they're like. Do you have the license? Do you have the license? And I'm, I'm like, like, yeah. I remember sure when I told you do. I had the license? And, Last week. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, just kidding. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so we've talked a lot about Tiki life. I feel like a Tiki God at this point. Yeah. I hope you guys do too. too. Mm-hmm. Or a zombie. Tiki prince. Princess? Tiki princess. Tiki goddess. So here's the deal. <laughs> I am going to ask you a series of increasingly simpler questions because of the zombie. We need to get, we need to get, uh, like horns. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Okay, so what's a tiki sound? You have to go, uh oh, uh, like that. And that's how you buzz in. Yeah, okay. like, okay. Rum, or you just go, rum. Rum. <laughs> rum. Okay, I don't do that. Rum. Okay, that's a little bit easier. Wait, are we both going to say rum? Yeah. So you buzz in to oh, okay. say rum to say that you know the answer to the question. And okay, the answer okay. is rum. Okay. We're going in decreasing difficulty. Everyone, sh- okay. okay. <sighs> there are four major Hawaiian tiki gods. Ancient followers worshipped these gods through prayer, chanting, surfing, lava sledding, which I want to know more about, and even human sacrifice. I am going to read you the names of six gods, two of which I have made up. (laughs) You have to determine which two are the imposters. (laughs) Are you ready? We have to wait till all of them are said. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so we have Ku, the god of war. Lakalui, the god of joy. Lono, the god of agriculture. Hinaho, the god of volcanoes. Cain, the god of creatures. Kanaloa, the god of the underworld, ruler of the ocean. I need to hear him again, again. yeah. Okay. Ku, god of war. Lakalui, the god of joy. Lono, the god of agriculture. Hinaho, the god of volcanoes. Cain, the god of living creatures. Kanaloa, the god of the underworld, ruler of the ocean. Rum. Rum. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> I'm say Ku, god of war. Okay. And Hinu, god of volcanoes. <gasps> no. Damn. No, I'm just going to do that Was no that matter if you're right? right or wrong. You had one correct. Would you like to steal? I don't remember what she said. She said, no, it doesn't matter. He doesn't remember. That's all she said, Ku, she, God of War. And you Hinaho. Bitch. And Hinaho? And Hinaho, the God of Volcanoes. Hinaho, the God of Volcanoes. And what was the second one? Lakalui, God of Joy. Lakalui. That is correct. Boom! You bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't yeah. I thought that they wouldn't have a God of War because they're like too chill. They're not too They're chill. Like Polynesian. Did you hear me say human sacrifice? Yeah, I, I missed that part. In the question, part. human sacrifice. Uh, here we go. Next question. He knew who I knew was made up. That's he ridiculous. Knew. I <laughs> knew it was the second one too. Lock a Louie. That was name. <laughs> oh, lock a Louie, a Louie, like a loogie. Uh. Wanna hug a loogie? Yeah, I was gonna put that, but I thought that was too obvious. Um, next yeah. up. That I'm not 100% easier. sure how to pronounce this, Great. so please, if you know how to pronounce this, hit us up at the Dip Crew on Twitter. Uh, orgeat syrup, or orget, I heard it called earlier, is found in many tiki cocktails. It's actually in your zombie tonight. Ooh. What nut is the flavor extracted from in this syrup? Brown? Megan? Brazilian nut? Absolutely not. I, I don't Garrett, know. would you like to steal? Rum. Garrett? Peanuts. <laughs> Definitely not peanuts. False. Uh, the nut that you're thinking of is D's nuts. I'm just kidding. It's almonds. Oh, what? almonds. Damn it. Dumb. Almonds. Yep. I was closer. Yeah. You were both I wrong. I, I was, was definitely closer. closer. At least Brazil nut is like exotic. You know? So and peanuts like, closer to almond though. Well, yeah, but like I feel like almond syrup would be called almond syrup. Or or get syrup. Uh okay. <laughs> One for Garrett, none for Megan. Garrett didn't get the. I got the, the first one. Get, well, he. I helped. I Here helped. We go. I fifty percent helped. Uh, on what famous Disney attraction can you actually see Trader Sam? Rum. Megan. Um, the Enchanted Tiki. Room. False. Great guess. Very wrong. Rum. Only birds. You only see birds there. Oh, I've never been on. Rum. There. Garrett. Jungle Cruise. Yes, the one. That's uh, it. I'm sorry, but the Jungle Cruise. What? 
All of his questions are always rigged because Garrett eats, breathes, drinks, lives. That's one Disney question. There's just one. Disney. There's just only one. one. Yeah. That was the only one. And then he 50% got my answer for the other one. Okay, wrong. I'll give you half for one. I'll give you half. I'm one and a half right. No, that's not how this works. I have half okay. Point. Garrett stole. Point. You're not being a team player here. I never am. Okay. Never once no. happened. Um, there's actually no rum in the South Pacific. None. Really? They weren't drinkers. So the, all this tiki stuff, totally made up. Huh. Gant, Gant, the guy from the Beachcomber, uh, used an old rhyme that traditionally built a drink called Planter's Punch when creating the foundation for his tiki cocktails. Finish this rhyme. Are you ready? You following me? I'm so yeah. ready. One of sour, two of sweet, three of strong, four of what? One of sour, two of sweet, three of strong? Yep. Four of? Four. It's kind of a stretch of a rhyme, if that helps. Okay. Of, like it's of a, rum. rum. We'll give it to Megan Mead? for sympathy. False. Oh. Mead. That's, that's an alcohol. Uh, rum, Mead. feet. No. I thought feet. That's too much of a rhyme. That's too good. One of sour, two of sweet, three of strong, four of... What did you say? I don't know. Did you say, did you say... Mead. She said mead. Oh. You four of... If he doesn't remember, he doesn't remember. That's on him. Wheat? Weak. We were looking Damn for wheat. Strong, weak. Oh. One of sour, uh, two of sweet, three of strong, four of weak. Oh, mm-hmm. it was opposite day. Mm-hmm. Got it. Here we go. That's I'll never win again. One of time. sour, two of strong. Wait. One, it's one more of, of a limerick, I guess, than a rhyme. It's not a but, rhyme. Yeah. Either I was way. looking for things that rhymed. I said it's kind of a stretch. But that wasn't a stretch, way, it just wasn't a rhyme. Weak, sweet, it's kind of, like if you're a rapper, it counts. Uh, spice is the traditional component that separates a tiki cocktail from a Caribbean cocktail. What is an example of a traditional spice that you would find in a tiki beverage? Rum. Megan? Cinnamon. That is correct. That means this is a tie. No, it's not. You have two? Yeah. What'd you get? I had the first one. The Trader Sam's the one, the first one. Okay, so this could be a tie. A tie. <laughs> No Holy pressure. Have ever come to winning. Holy yeah. During quarantine, I, me, Steph, the host, recreated a famous cocktail from Trader Sam's and posted the recipe to our YouTube channel. What cocktail did I make? Rum. Megan? That hat maker's ghost? Wait, it's something like that. The... Uh, I want to help you, but... Uh, the... Ha- the hat box goes. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> wow, that means we have a tie. Oh, we're not, we're not, we're not, getting, we're not tie tiki. breaking. No, that's it. Oh, fine. Yeah, that's how tiki life is, man. You know, it's chill. We're Shaka tied. bra. Shaka con, bro. All right, everybody, thank you for tuning into Just a Podcast in Paradise. We're so freaking excited that you hung out with us today. We would love it if you would subscribe so you don't miss an episode and give us a five star review on Apple Podcasts so we can continue to work hard for your next Florida vacation. You can also also follow us on Instagram at Just Take a Dip for daily updates on what's happening around the Sunshine State and check out our YouTube channel, Just Today in Paradise, for destination ideas, restaurant reviews, unboxing things you might want to take on your next trip, and copycat recipes like the Hatbox Ghost recipes uh, from some of our favorite places in paradise. We're wishing you a little bit of sunshine, some orgeet, some tiki gods, and whatever else you need to live a tiki life. Uh, we hope to see you at a tiki bar soon. Say goodbye, yo-ho, guys. Yo ho, yo ho. A tiki life for me. And a bottle of rum. Yo ho, yo ho. Oh my gosh. How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? How dare you?